right, thank you. Welcome to this uh, session on ORCID. Um, first, some details today. We're going to do a lot with Menti. Uh, I'm sure you're not, it's not the first time this week you'll start up Menti, but we'll ask you to log in in a minute again and use the Menti to interact with us. Uh, next to Menti, you can also uh, use the chat function of the uh, system itself. Let's see if the clickers work. Yes, so the Menti instructions for later. And we'll start with the session, identify yourself. So let me start with myself. Uh, I'm Felix Weidema, I work at Utrecht University Library. And one of my hobbies there is ORCID. And this session is fully about ORCID. And I'm here on behalf of the ORCID Consortium. And next to me is Suraya from Rotterdam. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, Alexis. My name is Suraya Faragaeta. I work as a project uh, leader for ORCID uh, within the library. So yeah, I'm really pleased to be here too. Good. And we have uh, another member of the ORCID Consortium from Groningen, uh, Leon Terschuren. Uh, he's also on the line. Are you there, Leon? Yes, I'm here. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Felix. Hi from uh, Groningen. Also an uh, ORCID member in Groningen and promoting ORCID in, uh, in various ways. So, great that I could take part. Good, thank you. Um, well, as the ORCID consortium, we have run an ORCID promotional campaign uh, that has been going for a while. Uh, and I think in Rotterdam you started a bit late, but you caught up quite well, did you, Soraya? That's correct, yes. So we started the campaign. I know that it was launched in 2019. We started a bit later, but in order to catch up with the rest of the universities, we've put a lot of effort into promoting ORCID across all faculties, institutes, and so far we've had a very good reception and hoping to, uh, hopefully, to promote ORCID as the standard re uh, researcher identifier. Um, at the university. And, and last month you put everything together in, into a month of ORCID madness? Absolutely. We went, we went all in with a full uh, ORCID madness month campaign in March sponsored by the Rotterdam School of Management and the Erasmus School of Economics for the uh, ARIM Institute. And yeah, it, it had very good reception. We invited guests. It was uh, full of events, um, including a lottery. So it was all very good. Yeah, very successful. And the uptake did, uh, did catch up and it, it gave a lot of visibility to ORCID. We're very pleased. Cool, cool. So yeah, we're trying to get some of that ORCID madness into this session as well. Um, so the opening, that's this part uh, where we introduce ourselves um, and we have introduced ourselves. So the, the, the next part will uh, be uh, a, a, an actual researcher talking about ORCID, uh, our invited speaker from Maastricht University, Fabiana Vicentin. She's an ORCID ambassador over there, uh, introduced by our another consortium member, Marielle Prevot, over there at Maastricht University Library. Um, and then the madness begins with the quiz where we hand over to Suraya. Uh, and I'll try to wrap up and give you a take-home message, and that wraps up this, uh, this session. So before we go over to our invited speaker, we have one question to get you started, or maybe better to get us started with you. Uh, this is where you start up Menti, and let us know what do you know about ORCID, do you have one, you know what it is, are you completely in the blank? Uh, or do you just like uh, a particular gift that can you make that decision? Uh, please dial in, use the code on top of the screen and let us see what, you, uh, what your current ORCID uh, capabilities are. So we can adjust the rest of the, the session more towards your uh, needs and wants. So we see the results coming in. I know there's a bit of a delay, but the yes is going rapidly. Uh, at three, so that's a good start. Uh, maybe we can then make a very, very short session. <laughs> Let's see if there's uh, also some people that are uh, uh, a bit less informed on ORCID in the audience. And we'll wait a bit for, uh, for your votes to come in. <laughs> uh, still, everyone has an ORCID, that's, that's great. Then I think our campaign was even more successful than we expected, yeah, right? Yeah, we're done here. Or is just... Uh... Um, just so you know, you can feel free to uh, go into the Menti with your mobile phone. I see it allows you to kind of, on the one hand, be able to interact with the Menti while also being able to watch the presentation on your screens to make your life a bit easier. And again, if you have urgent questions or comments, you can use the chat functionality of the system or uh, even there's a speech bubble in this Menti slide. 
Uh, it will pop up, but we might miss it. Uh, but our moderator, Leon, will pick up uh, the questions and send them to this tablet so we can cover the, those as well. Um, at this point, I see we have 12 results. So one person likes to stay anonymous. <laughs> um, someone is not quite sure. But uh, I think no one is... Uh, which cartoon is this? The yellow one? No one is completely in the, in the, in the blank on ORCID. So I think we'll slowly continue. Uh, and now with our invited speaker, Fabiana Vicentin, uh, assistant professor at Maastricht University. Um, are you there, Fabiana? Yeah, I'm here. Hi, welcome. Hi, thank you for the introduction. Uh, and yeah, we practice this so you can take over the whole presentation and I'll give you the floor. Yeah, I, I currently do not see the slide. <laughs> ah, your first slide is up. I see only... Okay, now I see the slide. Perfect. Okay, thank you for the introduction. So today I would like to share with uh, you my experience uh, as an ORCID user and as ORCID data user. So as an ORCID user, I registered a while ago, asked by a journal when submitted a manuscript. And after that, I realized, uh, basically I realize every day, that ORCID ID is simplifying my academic life. So first of all, I add ORCID identification uh, to my email signature. I use also uh, ORCID in uh, my, uh, in the specifically the personal QR code uh, to in, in my CV. And the most uh, the, the function that uh, the functionality that uh, I like uh, the most of ORCID is that uh, uh, with ORCID ID, I can uh, uh, log in. Uh, when I submit uh, a manuscript to uh, basically all uh, journals. So in this way, I save a lot of time because I do not need to remember multiple passwords. I need to remember only one password, the, uh, the password of uh, my ORCID account. And uh, ORCID uh, is also uh, recording all my uh, contribution as uh, an academic. So not only uh, my uh, papers, but also, uh, for instance, uh, my activity as uh, a reviewer. And uh, um, I want to share with you also uh, my experience as ORCID uh, data user. I uh, work in uh, the economics of science uh, field. The economics of science field is a subfield of uh, economics uh, that uh, basically uh, study how uh, scientists uh, work, so how science is produced. Basically, uh, this uh, field of science is studying our community. And so uh, we are uh, interested uh, to question uh, like, uh, what are the factors impacting uh, on our research activity? Uh, what, uh, our, uh, what are the factors increasing our chance uh, to obtain a grant? And uh, when we obtain a grant, uh, what is the impact of uh, that grant uh, on our productivity? Uh, to uh, answer uh, this question, we deal with a large amount of data. And for us, it is crucial to assign research activities, so output papers, uh, to uh, scientists. And uh, usually, uh, we do that uh, using algorithm. So we use, uh, uh, usually, we uh, use what are called algorithm for disambiguation. And uh, those algorithms uh, basically uh, allow us to associate uh, outputs uh, to scientists. But uh, uh, those algorithms are not perfect. And uh, for instance, here I'm reporting you an example where uh, changing the uh, parameterization of uh, uh, an algorithm, also the result change. So in one case, we, we can assign two or three, uh, in this case, uh, patents, but with the paper, it would be the same, to the same author. And so uh, for this, uh, this is uh, a big challenge. Uh, using um, a database like, uh, um, like ORCID, uh, 
we can solve uh, easily this problem. And uh, we are sure that uh, uh, the output that is uh, attributed uh, to a scientist is the right one. So let's say that uh, ORCID uh, make uh, my life uh, easier uh, as a scientist, so as a, as a user, but also as a, as a scholar uh, studying uh, the problem uh, of our community. Thank you. So these uh, was my these are ideas that I wanted to share with you my experience. Great. Thank you, Fabiana, for this uh, the, your experiences. So uh, again, if you have questions for Fabiana, you can add them in the chat, and we'll pick them up. Uh, you have to be quick because you are moving uh, to the quiz next. Uh, let's see if there is any uh, questions. Um, well. You talk about studying scientists, so you study your own colleagues. How do they react on that? Are they happy that you look at their details and at their output, or are they a bit curious what your goals are? Yeah, uh, on average, uh, I would say that uh, they are curious. I'm uh, curious by myself, uh, so I think that uh, it is nice uh, when uh, uh, you are part of, uh, let's say, the population uh, that uh, you are studying. And uh, yes, they are uh, interested in particular in uh, topics like, uh, okay, how uh, can I uh, increase my chance uh, uh, to be uh, founded? So what uh, might be the impact of uh, receiving uh, uh, specific funds? And, uh, and these are uh, questions uh, uh, that usually um, attract their curiosity. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's clear. So uh, ORCID helps you as a researcher to keep track of your own research, but it, it, it mostly it makes your actual research that you do more precise and more accurate because you can now uh, quickly link and perfectly exactly link the output to the individual researcher. So I see why you are an ambassador for ORCID because it will also improve your research uh, a lot. Um, yeah. Any other, do you have another question for Fabiana at this um, point? I don't have a, <clears throat> a question at this point, but obviously uh, just a reminder that the chat is perfectly anonymous and you can uh, ask away in any questions that you want through the chat. Uh, we'll pick them up from here. but. Um, Yes, no, I'm good. All right. Amazing presentation. Thank you, Fabiana. Well, thank you. Thank you uh, for the invitation. No problem. Uh, then we'll continue with uh, the, the, the madness, uh, the quiz. Uh, that's next up. I think uh, I'll let you push the, uh, the button. And the, 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 the magic machine. To you. Oh, thank you very much. So, yes, next we're moving on to the Orchid Mythbusters. This is aimed to be a bit more lighthearted. Uh, hopefully you... Uh, sort of will enjoy it as well. Uh, what we need you to do, just a uh, quick reminder, is to go into the Menti and please do interact with the slides. We can't see you, but we can see your reactions. Um, we've just made this quite bombastic Mythbusters. I'm sure many of you already know a lot of the answers and also know uh, Orchid uh, pretty well, but nevertheless, it's a good fun thing to do in this late afternoon. I, I see one question coming in. It's oh. an uh, important one because uh, w we have a Menti chat. That's a speech bubble. Uh, that's for your uh, comments. They're, they will pop up on the Menti uh, slide for a little while. So we might not pick it up. If you have a question for us or for uh, the other audience, use the, uh, the chat that in the surf tool that you're uh, using to watch this uh, live stream. So use the live stream chat for your questions and then they'll pop up like this one did on my tablet. Uh, use Menti uh, to answer the questions and to push the heart button or the cat button <laughs> in this slide. And the, the login details are uh, in the chat as well. You can go to Menti and use the code there. Brilliant, let's get started then. Um, there will also be like thumbs up, thumbs down, so please feel free to thumbs up if you agree with the statement and thumbs down if you disagree. But we're gonna first start Oh, with the first question, he had another idea. Please do write in what you think in a few words, what ORCID is. We know what it is, but obviously we want to hear from you. Uh, yet another idea, I love that one. Uh, a persistent identifier. Uh, well, we have two people putting in the information. Research ID for authors. 
By the way, you can submit more than one word if you want. Yeah, please go ahead. And we have some delay. So ah, okay. this is uh, this is the delay in action. There's a lot of words we have to identification identifier. Yeah, yet another ID that's a bit. Um, it, it's both through and both. I think it's not a problem. More IDs is not a problem. Uh, findable, persistent, open. Yeah, that's perfect. And to speak to some of the results that are coming in, um, absolutely, yes, uh, another ID, but a very special ID, uh, uh, as, it is, uh, absolute, uh, as it is open and is not attached to a particular vendor and is obviously free available for the researchers. Uh, it's not just another one, it's the one that connects those commercial IDs with your uh, um, personal ORCID ID. It's a bit like your passport number in yeah. many ways. I, I saw one that I want to pick out. It says uh, DOI, uh, DOI for humans. Yeah. I think that's true. And, it, and mostly we say it's a DOI for researchers. Uh, but ORCID in itself is quite open to, to anyone, so to humans in, in case. So you, you don't have to be a hardcore scientist to get an ORCID. You can be uh, a data processor, uh, a guy at the library. or uh, So it's very open to people involved in research in general. So the DOI for humans, I'll, uh, I'll keep that uh, and use it in my own uh, materials. Perfect, and as it says, it is a persistent identifier. I think we can move on to the next. Um, yeah, and I think we can conclude that our audience is... Uh, uh, knowledgeable. Knowledgeable, <laughs> yes, to say at least. So before we actually start covering some of the myth busters, uh, what uh, profiles do you use? Um, uh, we're quite curious. Uh, which are the favorite ones, or maybe if you, you, if you do use all of them, which a lot of the researchers do, which ones are more important to you? Um, important, this is actually useful for us. There you go, Google Scholar is a very uh, um, broadly used uh, identifier. Uh, I think in many ways very friendly, I suppose that's why it's so popular, and LinkedIn, of course. Yeah, Google is, uh, well, Google is very Google, so it is huge, it is a bit mysterious, but it is very effective and fast and everyone uses it, so that's uh, as expected. Um, uh, so ORCID is still at zero, so that's a bit that's disappointing <laughs> and a bit in conflict with the earlier comments. Uh, <laughs> ah, there it goes. Uh, there's still the delay in action, I think. Um, so I also see we have a, like a weighted average line. Yeah. That's more for Fabiana to dive into these numbers, maybe. <laughs> Probably. Not really a numbers guy. Okay, we okay. have six people have answered this, and maybe people are still swiping and deciding what to rank <laughs> high and low. Well, Orchid catches up. <laughs> it's not a race, by the way. You're perfectly entitled to like Google Scholar. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think the take-home messages, or well, there there are many profiles and academic profiles, uh, even academic social networks that we left out of this one. But there's like an abundance of profiles that um, people ask you to sign up for. So even publishers have their own system. Sign up for this one. Sign up for this one, and each one will generate a lot of emails. Um, so that's one of the questions I think we all recognize that from our campaign. That if you start promoting Orchid, you say, well. I already have Scholar, I already have LinkedIn, I already have Twitter maybe. Mm. Why do I need ORCID? But I think um, we are convinced that ORCID is not something else, but it's really <laughs> uh, something uh, crucial and very centralized. And it can save you, as Fabiana mentioned, a lot of time getting all your passwords and all your accounts. ORCID uh, tries to be uh, one account to rule them all in science, in academia. And also, it's uh, the single most important thing, and perhaps the reason why it ex exists in the first place, is to make sure that you are distinguished from everyone else through those, uh, that 16-digit ID. So it assigns an ID to you, and whenever you submit your manuscripts or funding, everything that you submit, if you do it with an ORCID, it will make sure that it, was, it, it will always be attributed to you. So essentially, while Google Scholar is very useful, it does not have this feature. Uh, and it's more like commercially oriented, but obviously very, very useful. Oh, I missed that. I saw it was about the orchid madness. 
Orchid Madness, goodness gracious, yeah. So, uh, and you barely survived, right? We barely Smart. survived, but it was yeah. all worth it. It was a big campaign, speakers and so forth. Uh, um, basically a full month, a month full of events uh, or, uh, aimed at informing about Orchid and encouraging everyone to use Orchids. But yeah, should we move to the next slide? I will happily speak more about the madness uh, one-on-one. I'll, I'll speak to you about it later. Now let's get into the myths. Perfect. Or misconceptions. <laughs> So, ORCID is like an academic LinkedIn. Feel free to thumbs up, thumbs down, however you feel like it. When I first came into the project, um, originally I thought that this may be exactly maybe what the function of ORCID is, uh, to exactly just to learn along the way that it is not. It is not a social network site. It is not meant to engage with other users. It is meant to distinguish you. Uh, as a researcher from everyone else and, and use it as the platform that then you use to basically transfer your metadata, your, the, the, the information about your publications onto other systems because it is interoperable. So its biggest function, most important function is not a social one, it's your academic BSN or your academic passport. Yeah. Yeah, it's a very technical solution to a very serious problem. So it's a bit boring, maybe. So that's why we, why we, why we need those uh, funny chickens to keep it interesting. Exactly. Uh, but keep in mind that it's very technical, but it solves a very crucial issue of misconnecting between your name and all your research outputs online. And mm. I think most people agree with us that it's yeah. not like an academic LinkedIn. Um, some people still agree it is sort of a LinkedIn. Yeah, that depends on how flexible you are in your definitions, of course, yeah. right? ORCID is an ID, ORCID is a record, and ORCID is also a database of researchers. So in that sense, it does have a very uh, te technical yeah. function. Maybe one day they'll, de they'll develop um, the like button. But for now, this is what it does. I got another question here. Is there a leaflet about the pros and cons of the different IDs? Um, well. If it's about uh, author IDs, we mainly use o uh, ORCID's own promotional material, and of course they mention their own ID uh, a lot. Um, but in general, uh, well, I do a workshop where we cover most academic profiles, and we discuss, uh, we don't tell you which ones are good and which ones are bad, but we discuss how to effectively use Google Scholar and maybe LinkedIn, and also ResearchGate and Academia. So there's not a good and bad, but we try to give and inform uh, researchers to make uh, to enable them to make their own decisions in this whole uh, network of, of different profiles. Yeah, and it will also be down to what is being used in your discipline as well. Uh, obviously, you don't want to be the only one who doesn't have a, yeah. a, a profile in a particular um, uh, discipline. But obviously, ORCID is is a bit beyond uh, the profile. It is the one that connects them all in many ways. Okay, a mythbuster. Setting up ORCID takes two minutes. This is, actually, down. <laughs> this is actually from ORCID's own campaign material. So ORCID says, well, it takes two minutes to set it up. Is that true or is it not? So, yeah, it could yeah. take less, but I think that uh, many people might think it may take some more time. And, well, if you follow ORCID throughout their whole, uh, all their promotional material, they advise you to set up an ORCID soon. And if you set it up soon, so maybe as a master student, PhD student, or even sooner, then I think two minutes is, is enough to, to get you started. Uh, if you wait until you are a professor with hundreds of publications out there, then it might take a little bit more. You have experience with that? Yes, absolutely. So, so well, it is true. It does take two minutes to literally set up an ORCID. Uh, to populate an ORCID is a slightly different affair, especially if you have indeed like 200, 300 publications. So what we're trying to encourage as part of the ORCID project is to, as part of the best practices, to set up an ORCID very early on in the career. Don't wait until you have 300 publications, that's for sure. Uh, on the one hand, your, all your research will always be attributed to you from the onset, and also so you don't want uh, you don't want to spend hours editing a record. So uh, definitely two minutes only to set up a bit more if you have publications, but still worth it nevertheless. Yeah, I think our audience is, uh, did set up their orchid quite soon, so they agree. They agree with us. I got a comment in the chat here. Uh, it's about NWO announced a strategy to maximize the benefits of implementing persistent identifiers. So NWO, of course, a big funder. Um, 
uh, we always say, and we always also looking at using more persistent identifiers like ORCID because also for NWO it has a lot of advantages to track researchers like Fabiana does by using their ORCID instead of getting their names correctly and using algorithms to distinguish researchers. So that's a good, uh, it's a nice comment and a good, uh, good development. Yes, so we look forward to that development and when it does happen we will be certainly be talking about it a lot. Oh, everyone will see my address, my email address. I think that uh, there's a lot of uh, people with uh, obviously privacy concerns, but ultimately what we need to remind researchers is that, and whoa, do you agree, disagree first before I, I go and give you my blurb? Okay, disagree, disagree. I think if you are frequent uh, ORCID users. So, or people don't know. care about their privacy, maybe they. You could share your email address on ORCID, so it's flexible, so you can put your email address in there. Yeah. Uh, it's not common. We usually see people linking to their institutional profile, so like yeah. their profile page at the university, which has contact details. Um, but in principle, it's uh, very uh, safe to share your details via ORCID. Correct. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, essentially, you own the record, is yours, you decide who sees what and when, uh, whether you want it to be publicly available or you want it to be just available to trusted organizations and trusted individuals. So, uh, no, your email will, by default, is set to privacy, uh, but obviously it's up to you whether you want to share it. Yeah, yeah, that's the, the good thing. Ooh, ORCID is a fad. Why sign up if it may disappear in a few years? I've had this question by a few people. How do you feel about that? So feel free to thumbs up, thumbs down, depending on whether you agree or disagree. Is many, many researchers have asked this before. And I think if, this, if you link this, uh, this comment up yeah. to the previous as uh, to just another um, identifier, I'm sure this is something that is in people's minds. So after how many years does something stop being a fad? Yeah. Is there a, but ORCID has been around for at least 10 years? Yeah. Yeah. Since 2013 for yeah. now. So it's not a trend or a hype, uh, it's, it's quite stable? As its name indicates, it's a persistent identifier. It was designed to last. So I see that most of you disagree with this and only two people showed uh, a concern about this. But yes, uh, it, is, it is here to stay, as it serves a, a purpose and it's being integrated by many, many uh, uh, publishers. Yeah, Universities. and it's another identifier, but maybe we need more identifiers because uh, research organizations like universities, can we identify them like ORCID? Uh, we now have ROAR coming up, uh, tries to be the ORCID of universities or institutes, research institutes. Uh, there are still a lot of items in the research infrastructure that are not properly ID'd. So I think there will be even more IDs on their way for uh, institutes, for funding bodies and funding itself. Um, so more IDs, persistent IDs will help a lot of researchers do their work and uh, so there are more coming up. So it's not a fad and there's more to come in the persistent identifier uh, world. Yeah. So, yeah, go ahead. Orchid wants to, my details to make a profit, yes. <laughs> Agree or disagree? Well, yeah, most of our jobs is Orchid, so we do benefit from Orchid, I think, some way in the, in, indirectly. Um, and of course, what you hear quite often is that if it's something is free, then you are the product. Do you think that applies with ORCID? It's free, you can just sign up. Well, ORCID is one. not entirely free, and that's no. the drill, isn't it? No. Uh, essentially, it's free for you, for researchers, but uh, ORCID is part of our consortium, and we pay, as universities, we pay membership fees to ensure that you have you know, uh, uh, seamless access. Uh, so you can use it seamlessly, not just um, the ORCID org itself, but within your uh, university systems. So absolutely, yeah. uh, and they don't really want to st steal your data to sell you things. They want uh, to essentially encourage you to sign up because you own it, you control it, and you share what you want to share to uh, give you visibility uh, and make you more discoverable, not just within your country, but abroad, as it obviously uh, it has that very big international exposure. 
Yeah, so we, we are part of the consortium made up of universities. So universities do benefit, so that's why they contribute with uh, membership fees. There's other members, there, there are industry members, so uh, big publishers, they also benefit from identifying researchers properly. Uh, associations and societies, they all benefit uh, from ORCID, so that's why they all contribute. And that's also why I think there's no risk that maybe a big evil publisher will buy ORCID or take it over. It's an independent, not-for-profit organization uh, which purely works uh, in favor of identifying researchers in this research infrastructure. Uh, and again, a bit boring, but very, very effective and functional and useful for, for the, the average researcher. The ultimate uh, benef beneficiary of ORCID is the researcher. Oh, my university will create an ORCID record for me, if only. <laughs> like, dislike, have you had that experience? Your university wanting to set up an ORCID for you? You want to relax and let ORCID do all the work? I think that, that applies a bit. I would like that. <laughs> and I think this also goes in, so how do we campaign? Are we like aggressive spamming you with five emails per week? Create an ORCID, create an ORCID, create an ORCID. Uh, or make it mandatory or have your boss sending you, you need to have an ORCID now. Mm. Uh, so at the mo I think most universities, it's not mandatory. It's highly recommended, but because you, it's something you create for yourself. So that's why it's only recommended and not uh, mandatory to do because Correct. you need to put in some effort as well to keep it up to date and to link it. So you need to be motivated to get an ORCID. Uh, that's why I think it's not mandatory in, the, in any of the universities in the Netherlands. No, it's a strongly encouraged, but definitely not mandatory. And uh, it would be lovely if somebody else could create the ORCID ID, but they can't. It's entirely up to you. You control it from the onset. Um, and uh, I think there were some discussions earlier on, I think, uh, in the UK about uh, setting up or helping re uh, researchers set up an ORCID but that's just not the ethos of the organization. You control it, you own it, and, and only you really can um, do anything about it. So uh, sadly not. I think it would save you a lot of work, but no, the university won't create an orchid for you. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, you may be uh, getting anxious. When I leave the university, I'll have to create a new orchid. Let's see what our audience thinks of this. I'm almost panicked by looking at this GIF myself. Yeah. This is quite a after disturbing one. Yeah, after investing those precious hours, adding your 300 publications, you move on to another university. Do you think you need to create another ORCID? Oh, I think most people are with us. Yeah, yeah, so ORCID, you create it once and it will follow you throughout your academic career, wherever you go. Uh, your ORCID, you can take it with you. Uh, and that's why one of the, the, the tips when starting with ORCID is that you can add multiple email addresses. So you can use your university address and maybe your, your private email, your Gmail or Hotmail. Uh, and at some point even switch. You have a primary one which sends you the emails of notifications. Uh, and when you move to another university, you switch your primary email and then you're connected to your other university or institute or wherever you go uh, in research or in academia. Yeah, so definitely, please only create one or kids. Uh, you don't need more than one. It will follow you throughout your career, wherever you go. It's yours, you own it. Uh, uh, but yeah, do change it. Do add two emails and definitely use your institutional email as well. As, uh, also, that helps us um, um, sort of keep track uh, of your research as well. Okay, moving on to the next one. Uh, yeah, ORCID, I only needed to submit an article and that, uh, yeah, that relates to the point where we said it's mandatory or not, so mm -hmm. we don't make it mandatory at, at our universities, but there are some journals that say, well, we do benefit from ORCID that much that to submit, at least uh, the, uh, the, the primary author has to have an ORCID and some journals even ask all authors to submit an ORCID, right? That's correct. So uh, it, uh, many people are prompted to create an ORCID, uh, sometimes pa panic-induced ORCID creation, to submit a manuscript, which is never a great idea. It's better that when you create an ORCID, you know what you're doing and you control from the onset. But some journals, obviously depends on the discipline, but some journals do expect you to submit your manuscript with an ORCID ID. Um, often what happens, people forget they've done this and then they 
later they create another, another orchid. That only confuses the system, if anything. Uh, from, the, from the minute that you start publishing, from the minute that you start submitting article, especially if it prompts you to use ORCID, always use the same, and it will always, always, always tie your publications to your name. Um, so if you, for example, as many hap often happens with women, if you get married, change your name, the identifier will always make sure that your research is recognized, always. So uh, that, that's essentially what, what ORCID does for you. So not just when to, you don't just need it when you want to submit an article, but don't wait until you need to submit an no. article to create an ORCID. Ooh, having an ORCID ID is enough. I don't need to fill the entire record. Nobody's going to ever force you, I guess, to fill in the entire record. But before I explain, let's see what you think. Do you think this is enough, just having an ID, you don't really need uh, to populate the entire record, add all your works, your funding, your 300 publications? So this is mixed. Yeah. Yeah, I think it works for uh, many people as well to just have the ID. Um, let's see, yeah, it's almost 50-50 at this point. Uh, yeah, a, little, yeah some, a bit more people disagree. Well, I think you don't have to have the complete record filled out, but I think it really helps in research, if you're a researcher, that you have some place where all your activities are listed. So if you have your own website, then you rely on your own website and you can use your kit on the site. Or if you have a, uh, another profile which you have fully up to date, fully up to speed, everything is there, then you can use that profile and have ORCID on the side being purely functional and technical in favor of you. But if you don't have those or if you're setting something up, then it, it would benefit to have everything in ORCID and you can have your publications. And publications are not just uh, journal articles, it's no. data sets, it's presentations that you share via FixShare, it's your peer review activities, it's memberships, it's, well, yeah. it's quite complete in what you can add to ORCID and it really helps to have something in, everything in one place uh, and ORCID is set up for that, uh, to do that with, I think, the least amount of effort from all the other Profiles. Yeah, so uh, nobody has anything with ORCID related. Nobody's going to force you to do anything. Of course, it is, uh, you control it from the onset. Uh, but I will always encourage researchers to not just create the record, but keep it curated regularly, keep it up to date. And um, one of the main benefits of ORCID is in interoperability. It works with multiple systems, so it works with your CRIS system, be it pure or something yeah. else. And as we mentioned, it works with the, with the publishing, uh, with, with the publishers. So Essentially, all that metadata that you add onto your record can be transferred to other systems, uh, especially when you're, I think you probably have experienced filling in long forms for funding, and uh, it would basically save you all that time. Uh, a lot of systems have already integrated ORCID, which means that if you add your ORCID, that information about you that lives in your record will be transferred somewhere else so you don't have to create yet another profile. So ultimately, it, it, what, what does ORCID say? Um, uh, fill it once, reuse often. Yes. That is the main philosophy behind ORCID. I have a comment here as well uh, relating to uh, DOIs. So I said DOIs are not only provided on scholarly articles. I was surprised to have a few calls. I improved some carpentries.org lessons. So yeah, that relates to what you can uh, list under your output in ORCID. It's not just journal articles, it's everything with a DOI or, well, basically anything. You, you can add manually anything you created, but if you use the automated import function, you can add anything with a DOI because it's linked to Crossref. That's mainly journal articles and it's linked to data site and that's practically anything data related. So also contributions to uh, carpentries. Uh, data sets on Zenodo, uh, Figshare, your publication, your uh, slides on Figshare. Yeah, so you can have uh, things out there with a the DOI that you can automatically import in your ORCID profile. Essentially, it's not just uh, putting your priced article. Uh, it is basically anything that you've created as part of your academic contribution. And just recently, ORCID also added uh, the um, data management plan as a work type that you can add onto your record. So it recognizes the full extent of the full breadth of your academic contribution. So, we've so I think that was the madness, the quiz. <laughs> Do we have a winner? <laughs> no, Do we have I a think prize? That, yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> No winners here, but everybody uh, participated, which we really appreciate in the... Yeah. 
Well, thank you all for the comments and for the answers uh, here. Um, we're going to wrap up. I think, uh, shall I go uh, push some buttons? <laughs> Uh, the, yeah, the wrap-up, as I said, we reuse ORCID's own material, that's the philosophy, uh, it's one ID globally, so it's the same for anyone. Um, these are the five main points, I think we covered them all during the quiz and uh, using your comments and your questions there, uh, so thank you for that. Uh, so again, it ensures your research output are correctly attributed to you, regardless of your name, how complicated it is. Um, it's reliable, it's interoperable, it connects different systems to each other, it's central in the research infrastructure. Um, it's persistent, it will be there for, well, as long as we have electrical power, let's, uh, let's say that. And it takes two minutes if you start ahead and uh, will save you a lot of time down the road in your career. So these are the main messages. Are there any final questions from the audience? Um, the fine, this is the last gift. You selected all the ones. Is <laughs> this your favorite? All the nicest gifts. Yeah. Is this your favorite? I think it is. Can you publish your 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 gift collection somewhere? Um, yeah, I, I will. I think uh, they're really nice. <laughs> yeah, I think that will be your high, highest cited. Uh, this is my high achievement as part of the project. It will be cited a gifts. lot if you make a collection of your gifts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> curated uh, gift selection. Uh, questions. I see great presentation. So yeah, that's. Uh, you like oh, my oh. gifts. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so no questions at this point. So I'll slowly click to the final uh, slide. Uh, well, use your membership. As we said, yeah, we the membership, the consortium. We contribute to Orchid. We pay the fees, the contribution, and it's free to use by anyone in research. So get started. Uh, reactivate your account if it's somewhere hidden in your inbox. Uh, if you don't have one, uh, get one and promote it, uh, especially with your, uh, your students, if you're a supervisor, point them towards ORCID, it's never too early to get one. Um, and if you want to get your local support, you can go to surf.nl slash ORCID and there all the universities are listed with a URL to point you towards their uh, website with ORCID support for that university. Yeah, and I think uh, obviously this is a consortium NL, uh, ORCID consortium NL uh, effort, so we, we want to signpost this, this, um, this website, so essentially to let you know that you don't have to necessarily work on your ORCID uh, alone, and I, I, it's a very straightforward system, but there are some complexities to it, so feel free to contact uh, all your university um, uh, ORCID support uh, staff so they can help you get the ORCID uh, where it needs to be. And please don't just, just register for ORCID, populate your ORCID and yeah, go mad for ORCID, as yeah. we like to say. Yeah, yeah and check if there's uh, activities. I know in Utrecht I do workshops. Uh, in Groningen there's webinars and in Rotterdam you also have activities on ORCID. So check the websites for, uh, for activities there uh, and reach out if you need more support. Uh, we're there to help uh, for uh, now and for, uh, well, forever is for the, maybe for a bit the, Forever is a bit much, but for the per we'll be near future for sure, yes, yes. <laughs> for the years to come. I don't see any other questions in the chat, so I think we'll... Uh, yeah, and timing-wise, we're also almost yeah, done. Yeah, we managed to do this in time. I'm pretty impressed. Yeah, so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll leave you with uh, a few minutes, and then you're off for the, the final plenary session with uh, the closing of the research week, and I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and I think you... Uh, we enjoyed this uh, 45 minutes Definitely talking about numbers, it. right? Yeah, it's been great. Thank you so much, Akshul, also for interacting with, um, with the slides. Um, you've made it a lot easier for us since we can't see you. Uh, so really appreciate it. And yeah, obviously contact us for anything further. We're here to help. And that's it from us. Thank you very much for coming. All right.